Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us today for a historic announcement by Governor Shapiro. I'm Neil Weaver, Secretary for the Governor's Office of Administration. My department is responsible for all things IT for all state agencies under the Governor's jurisdiction. Joining us today is Corey Zarek, Deputy Administrator for the United States Digital Service Office. We have another special guest that we will be uh, introducing here shortly. But first, as you know, Governor Shapiro has made customer service a cornerstone of his agenda since day one. And today he will unveil an exciting and new in initiative to improve customer service in the digital space. I mentioned that the Office of Administration is responsible for IT, but we're also responsible for human resources, equal employment opportunity, diversity, and records management for the governor's jurisdiction. Our customers are Commonwealth departments and employees. It's approximately 40 state agencies and more than 70,000 state employees. Our job is to support every one of them and help them be successful. And today's executive order to improve digital will help them be, take a major step forward in achieving our goal. And now please join me in welcoming Governor Josh Shapiro. Thank you. Um, thank you, Secretary Weaver. And um, I want to say thank you to the women and men of the Office of Administration and the Office of Information Technology for the work that you do day in and day out all across our Commonwealth to make sure that the interactions that the good people of Pennsylvania have with state government um, are easy and efficient. I also want to thank Deputy Administrator Corey Zarek from the United States Digital Service for being here and for your partnership in preparing this announcement and making sure that Pennsylvanians have a seamless experience online between state and federal services. You know, from day one, as the Secretary said of my administration, we've been focused on making government work for the people of Pennsylvania and making things more efficient here in the Commonwealth. Pennsylvanians work hard and they deserve a government who works at least as hard as they do every single day. That's why in my first few weeks in office, I signed two executive orders that will help transform the way state government works for Pennsylvanians. First, I created the Pennsylvania Office of Transformation and Opportunity, a one-stop shop for businesses to help cut through the red tape, to bring state agencies together, to support Pennsylvania businesses that want to grow, and to encourage other businesses to move here. About a week later, I, s I launched a comprehensive initiative to improve the Commonwealth's licensing and permitting and certification processes so we can give Pennsylvanians the certainty that they deserve in their application process. That includes a money-back guarantee if the Commonwealth fails to meet our deadline. Throughout my first 100 days in office, I've sent a clear message under my leadership the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania is going to meet the needs of our constituents, and we are going to get things done. But if we're going to best serve the people of Pennsylvania, then we have to meet them where they are, and we have to do so effectively and efficiently. There needs to be no wrong door for entry to get help and to get services. No matter how you choose to access government services, you need to know that you're going to get help, whether you're walking into a building or whether you're going online. This building, the Keystone Building that we're all in, opened back in 2001, just a few years after the Commonwealth launched its first website in October of 1995. This building replaced the old Transportation and Safety Building, which housed some of the Commonwealth's most important customer service operations. This is where folks would call when they needed a license or a registration renewed. When this building opened, it was a literal example of government modernizing to better serve the public. Now, 22 years later, we need to do that with our digital services as well. Because over the last two decades, since the Commonwealth built this building and launched its first website, more and more people have gone online to get help for things like renewing their vehicle registration, visiting our state parks, and registering a new business. Let me give you just a few examples. In the year 2022, 
more than 250,000 people made reservations through the State Parks and Forest Digital Reservation System. Last year, nearly 55,000 Pennsylvanians completed the online form through business.pa.gov to start a new business right here in the Commonwealth. And consider this, over 5.8 million people went online to access PennDOT driver and vehicle services in 2022 alone, representing 9.9 .9 million different transactions. We all have certain expectations when we go online nowadays. We expect the websites to be easy to navigate and easy for staff to administer. We expect applications to be very quick to complete. We expect it to be in a language that we're able to understand. We expect to be able to accomplish almost anything, anything in government on our smartphones. And we expect that we can do anything online that we could do if we simply walked into a building. And that needs to be true of our Commonwealth's digital services too. But right now, that is not always the case. And today we begin the process of correcting that. One of the first ways we're modernizing and improving is by reaching out and listening to the public, getting their feedback. As part of this process, one of my first steps uh, that my administration took was to put a comment box on the homepage of our website. Now, there may be something that you simply glossed over and didn't pay attention to, but a lot of Pennsylvanians were paying attention to it. In fact, we received in just a week or so, um, 12,000 individual Pennsylvanians reached out with comments on our website, Remake. They provided really helpful tips like asking us to use easy to understand language, asking us to use clearer fonts, and suggesting we give user updates on their applications for permits and licensing. All great suggestions. We want to continue to hear from the good people of Pennsylvania to improve our digital services. This is critically important. If we truly want our Commonwealth to move at the speed of business, if we truly want to build a customer service oriented experience online that is quicker and more user friendly, and if we truly want to open up the doors of opportunity for all, then we must do everything we can to improve our digital services here in the Commonwealth. That is why, in addition to listening to this feedback from Pennsylvanians, today I'm signing an executive order to establish the Commonwealth's Office of Digital Experience, or CODE, PA. This office will be made up of a full-time team of digital experts who will work to improve online government services right here in Pennsylvania. They will be paid with existing budget dollars. And by creating an internal team that is able to write code, to build apps and digital programs, to work across agency and systems and services, we are going to build a comprehensive, user-friendly online experience for all Pennsylvanians. And we are going to save taxpayers money that would other guys otherwise go to expensive contracts with external consultants and third-party vendors. We're going to do more in-house. To lead this new office, I've appointed Bree Pardo as the Executive Director of Code PA. You'll hear from Bree in a moment. I'm incredibly proud to have Bree joining us, one of three women leading the transformation of digital services here in Pennsylvania, along with our Acting Chief Information Officer, Patty Chapman, and my Director of Digital Strategy, Annie Newman. Bree is an accomplished digital services expert who has spent her whole career creating products and software in the private sector that is human-centered and customer service oriented. I know she has the experience and vision to lead this new office and to make our digital services among the best in the country. And to support our new executive director, we'll also be building a team of top UX designers, software engineers, product managers, and data scientists. By the way, UX stands for user experience, Mark Levy. Let me give you a few examples of the kind of work Code PA can do. In line with the executive order I signed in January, they can help us centralize the permit application in a one-step, easy-to-use online form. Working with Deputy Administrator Zarek and the USDS team, 
they will work to make Commonwealth digital products work seamlessly with the federal government. That way, Pennsylvanians can easily apply for programs that have a state and a federal component like WIC or SNAP and be able to access their services more seamlessly and more quickly. And they'll be able to help us transition our remaining paper forms online. If you can believe it, here in 2023, there are still forms that can only be filled out in paper, not online. That will change. After serving our country and defending our freedom, we should make it as easy as possible for veterans to apply, and Code PA can help bring us those forms online. I'm really excited about Code PA because it's also going to break down the barriers of entry for so many Pennsylvanians. Understand that I believe technology is a great equalizer here in this Commonwealth and across this country. It can open up doors for all Pennsylvanians, whether they live near a state office building and they can drive to it or not. It will allow people to access government services in far more languages than they can right now. Now, let me be clear about something. As we work to build out broadband access across this Commonwealth, these same services that we're moving to a more digital platform will still be available in person. Like I said at the top, there will be no wrong door. And a key part of our job is figuring out how to make things equally easy to access, both online and in person. Code PA is cutting edge. This is Pennsylvania's tech startup. And we're looking for the best and the brightest to bring these innovations to life. And I promise you, you don't even have to wear a suit and tie when you come to work. In fact, I'll lend you a pair of my Allbirds if you want, if you'll feel more at home in this tech environment. Starting today, anyone who's interested in joining the Code PA team should apply at employment.pa.gov before May 10th. We are hiring and we are open for business. I know that there are big things that are going to come from Code PA. Their work will make government services more accessible to all, and I'm very excited for them to get to work under Bree's leadership. And with that, I'll turn it back to Secretary Weaver for a few more comments. Mr. Secretary. Thank you, Governor, and thank you for your leadership in this space. As the Governor said, most Pennsylvanians interact with the Commonwealth online. We also interact with other entities online, like financial institutions and retailers. And when we do, we often notice a difference between the customer experience we have with government and the one we have doing business online with the private sector. Simply put, their services are usually easier to find, easier to use, and faster to complete. Today's announcement by Governor Shapiro will set the stage and the course for this administration to close the gap between the .com experience and the .gov experience and provide better service to Pennsylvanians. States like Georgia, Colorado, New Jersey, and cities like Baltimore and Philadelphia have recently formed these teams with specialized skills to focus on improving their digital services. Their success demonstrates the potential to transform how Pennsylvanians interact with their state government. Pennsylvania may not be the first to create an office, but Governor, I commit to you, we will be the best. We want this office to be forward thinking and make Pennsylvania a leader in providing fast, friendly, and efficient services online. We want to deliver online experiences that build trust in government. We want to make it easier for Pennsylvanians to get what they need and move on with their day. In order to be successful, we knew we had to find the right person to lead this office. We worked closely with partners, including the U.S. Digital Service, U.S. Digital Response, the Beck Center for George at Georgetown University, and 18F to hone our vision about what this office would look like. We leveraged their networks of service-minded technology professionals to cast the widest net possible for candidates. We reviewed over 60 applications, and we conducted multiple rounds of interviews to narrow our search. And today, I am pleased to introduce our first executive director of Code PA, as the governor announced, Bree Pardo. Her official first day will be in about two weeks. And we are excited to get her on, on the team and moving. And we're looking forward to her starting with us. Bree.
Good morning, everyone. I'm so happy to be here today. I still can hardly believe that this opportunity is real, to be honest. The chance to be part of such a huge transformation is humbling and excites me to my core. I moved to Pennsylvania 10 years ago to lay down roots where my husband's family has been long established. It didn't take long for me to fall in love with my small town. I'm still amazed to this day how rich with opportunity this area has been to do big scale digital innovation tucked between a cornfield and a soybean field. My career started in Lycoming County, working with an incredible team to market Lycoming engines and bring their story to life on digital platforms. It was there that I learned the importance of data structure, alignment across teams, and my love for steel-toed boots. I then ventured to Geisinger, an innovator at the bedside and an organization filled to the brim with inspirational leaders. I tucked such important lessons in my pocket there. Don't settle, push harder, be resilient, own your ideas. Innovation can be uncomfortable, do it anyway. We built a digital team there from the ground up and transformed the way patients and health plan members experienced healthcare. I sat side by side with my colleagues through the pandemic, bracing with every change. We innovated through chaos at lightning speed. Then the universe came knocking with an opportunity to drive digital transfer transformation at Mainline Health outside of Philadelphia. It was a leap of faith, but from my first day on the job, we hit the ground running to build a digital infrastructure that will be able to scale and provide online access for patients in that community. It will not be easy to say goodbye, but I'm certain that my team will continue to thrive in my absence. I joked with my husband that when I tell friends and family that this is my next step, the first thing they say is, congratulations. And the very next is, wait, will you be working on this or that? Because I have ideas. As a Pennsylvania resident and a digital experience professional, I'm excited for this once in a lifetime opportunity to transform how we interact with state government. My goal for this team is pretty simple. I wanna help make digital experiences easy for every Pennsylvanian. I want our residents to have a voice in how we make it happen. And I want every resident to have equal access to the systems and processes we build. I want us to build upon the good work that is being done by our state agencies, digital teams, and IT professionals. And maybe this is the inner competitor in me coming out, but I wanna make it the best. We've got a lot of work to do. I can't wait to partner with the incredible state employees, build a team of dreamers, and dig in. Thank you to Governor Shapiro and his team for this opportunity and for having the vision to create this office in Pennsylvania. And now I'm excited to introduce our next speaker, Corey Zarek, Deputy, Administrator, Deputy Administrator for the United States Digital Service. Good morning. Thank you so much for having me, um, Governor Shapiro, Secretary Weaver, and Executive Director Pardo. Um, congratulations, all of you, and thank you for having me today. Uh, my name is Corey Zarek. I am Deputy Administrator of the United States Digital Service. We're a technology organization based at the White House that uses design and technology to deliver better services to the American people. I'm excited to be here today to recognize this significant effort by Governor Shapiro and team to launch Code PA. Increasingly, more states and communities are investing in dedicated units to provide customer experience and service delivery. And over the past five to 10 years, we've really seen this movement grow. It's a proud moment for me and my colleagues at the White House, as well as the whole civic technology sector to introduce another team into the fold. By focusing on improving your state's digital services, you're putting people first and meeting them where they are, which is increasingly online. For more than eight years, the United States Digital Service has brought top technologists to partner with federal agencies on some of our highest priority needs. If you ordered COVID tests from covidtests.gov, a process that asked just a few questions and took just a few minutes, that was one of ours, a joint effort by the Postal Service, the Department of Health and Human Services, and USDS. We're currently partnered with the FCC, the Federal Communications Commission, to make it easier for Americans to apply for the $14 billion in benefits for households to have uh, high quality, affordable broadband access to their homes and mobile devices. And for many years, our team has worked closely with the Department of Veterans Affairs, most recently to launch a mobile app, making it easier for veterans to get access to medical benefits. 
one of, one of the biggest slowdowns veterans experience when trying to get their medical benefits is needing to upload paperwork and documents. The mobile app has managed to clear 20% of that backlog since just launching last year. In 2021, President Biden issued an executive order on customer experience, directing federal agencies to design and deliver government services seamlessly and equitably, and in a way that a manner that all people can access. It was a strong affirmation of what teams like the US Digital Service and now Code PA stand for. We rely on technology to deliver services, and we should rely on that technology to be simple, seamless, and secure. It's critical that a disaster survivor, a business owner, a working parent, an immigrant, a student, or a veteran, that they shouldn't have difficulty accessing clear information or receiving benefits to support their economic mobility. And having a dedicated team with design and tech skills like Code PA will be key to ensuring that government can efficiently design and deliver the services we rely on. Governor Shapiro's office has made the rounds with the civic tech ecosystem to build on the lessons that we have all learned over the past decade. And we are confident that this team is set up to uh, succeed and excel and perhaps be the very best. Um, and we are right here with you to support that effort. Congratulations to Bree for being the first executive director to lead this team. Um, from meeting with Bree, she brings the key mix of understanding technology and delivery and also being able to translate that to ordinary folks, which is critical. Um, she also joins an important workforce of Pennsylvania's public service, yeah, Pennsylvania's public servants who've been tending to people's needs across the state, handling paperwork and phone calls and in-person visits, all of the doors. Um, and especially doing so when someone is in need is no small feat. Together, this team of dedicated public servants and Code PA will be able to deliver the services that Pennsylvanians can rely on wherever they are. Millions of residents will eventually spend less time on the phone, less time pulling paperwork together, less time traveling to offices around the state, and will have fewer headaches about their interactions with government. After all, government should just work. Ordinary folks shouldn't have to worry about how. I'm excited for what's happening here in Pennsylvania. We extend our congratulations on behalf of President Biden, the White House, and the entire civic tech ecosystem. Welcome to Code PA uh, as part of this civic tech ecosystem. We are glad you're joining us to make government better for the public. Thank you. Thank you. Thank right. you very much. Thank you. Um, and with that, we're happy to take a few questions. first executive order is that there is going to be, you know, uh, you're, you're getting rid of the college degree requirement yes. for jobs. So is there going to be a college degree requirement applied to these coder jobs that you're opening up right now? No. What are, what are some specific web functions right now that the Commonwealth is not meeting the goals that you would like them to Yeah. Let me, let me give a general answer, then I'll invite Bree and anyone else up uh, to speak about that. By the way, you should have had a helmet on when you were riding your bike yesterday. I saw you going down the, <laughs> down the road there. Um, I think when you go online, you should be greeted with a website that's super user-friendly, that's focused on the user experience, the fewest clicks possible to get the answer, the result, the application process. It should be available in all sorts of languages. It should work um, whether you're on a desktop or whether you're on your smartphone. However you choose to access it online, it should be simple. And to me, I think the process is just too cumbersome. There's also not a level of uniformity between the various agencies when you're processing an application. It should be simple. It should be streamlined. It should be easy to use. And it's in that spirit that we're focused on creating a user experience that is far better than the one folks have now. As for the specifics, I talked about a few things that people regularly do, whether it's reserving place at a state park or processing a registration for their automobile. Both forms look different. Both are different processes. That's an example of how we need to streamline that process. Bree or anyone else you want to jump in? No? Okay. Thank you. I just wonder if you could give us an update on how the agencies are coming and providing you with the information on the timeline for permitting. Sure. Um, I think it was hard to hear, but your question was about the permitting EO. 
Um, the due date on that is May 1st for the agencies to submit that information um, to the Office of General Counsel. They're going to meet that deadline of May 1st, and then we're going to process that, and then we will be able to provide the public with a menu of all the various licenses, permits, et cetera, and a timeline for each um, following our review of what the agencies provide us. But we are on schedule to meet that May 1st deadline that I established. There was another question. Yeah. yeah Governor, you mentioned your first 100 days and it's this week. Anything else you can say beyond what you said, uh, touched on before about the experience of being governor in the first 100 days? It's humbling. And uh, I feel a real sense of responsibility to the good people of Pennsylvania. Uh, I'm working my tail off. My team is working their tails off. Um, and we're beginning the process of delivering meaningful results. I've been really encouraged um, by what I've seen in the agencies and how hard working um, our state government uh, officials and personnel are. I've been incredibly encouraged by the reception I've received in the legislature from all four caucuses. You're beginning to see a spirit of bipartisanship um, and a spirit of cooperation. I think it's interesting to take note that one of the first bills that the State House of Representatives seems to be uh, considering, uh, and the leaders can speak for themselves, but this is my view from the outside looking in, is um, President Pro Tem Kim Ward's bill about breast cancer screening. Um, that's an incredibly important bill, but putting aside the importance of the substance of that bill, that's a bill sponsored by the Republican leader coming over to the Democratic-led House. And instead of just shelving it because it comes from someone of the other party, um, it seems that leaders on both sides of the aisle are finding ways to work together around common sense solutions, which is what I've been trying to encourage in this building. Take down the temperature, level up the cooperation between the parties. That's just one example of what I hope will be many areas where we can find common ground and work together. So, the first 100 days have been humbling, they've been exhilarating, it's been stimulating. We've been working incredibly hard, and I'm really encouraged by what I'm seeing from our state employees, from lawmakers, and others who want to get things done. Time for one or two more, guys. Um, if I, I could ask, I was at, um, Representative Fiedler had a news conference this morning talking about solar grants for school districts and community colleges, and it requires the state to put up some money to get federal dollars. And I guess she's going to be asking for $500 million of state money to get $500 million from the federal government to pay for uh, solar installation and studies. And I just wonder, is that an idea that you think you could get behind? I think that's a really interesting idea. I'd like to review Representative Fiedler's bill um, specifically so I can give you a more fulsome answer. But um, that's the kind of stuff I think we should be exploring here in the Commonwealth. I'd also note. Um, Representative Fiedler and others have been champions of trying to address the needs of toxic schools and schools that have other infrastructure needs. And my budget sets aside over the next five years a half a billion dollars for that kind of work. I think it's critically important that we come together on a bipartisan basis to pass that. Any thoughts on the president announcing his bid for reelection? Well, I will tell you the, the president has delivered for the good people of Pennsylvania. Um, through the resources that um, the White House and others work so hard to secure, we're in a position to cap um, orphan wells that are leaking um, in an unacceptable level of methane into our atmosphere. We're able to repave more roads and bridges. We're able to build out broadband. You heard Administrator Zarek reference that uh, before. The President has routinely delivered for Pennsylvania. In the wake of the derailment in East Palestine, I was on the phone with the President multiple times where he just kept stressing that the federal government would deliver whatever is needed for Western Pennsylvania to deal with that, and he has. So um, I'm grateful for what the President and this White House have done um, to support Pennsylvania. I'm enthused that he's running for re-election to continue that important work. I'll be supporting him and looking to help him any way I can to, to win this great battleground of Pennsylvania. Thanks, folks.